So the title of the show is Supernatural and I wanted to kind of expand on what black hair kind of represents to me. Um, this idea of playing on the super and natural, kind of like a play on words on the word supernatural. Um, super meaning kind of expanding beyond what is seen as natural. And then natural referring to kind of black hair, um, hair that is kind of made without being um, ironed look with like a flat iron or or straightened i kind of wanted to touch on everything from locks from like dreadlocks to um, afros and just kind of going beyond what can be seen um, in the here and now so a lot of the images um, regarding like the faces kind of stem from hairstyle guide posters and a lot of the dreadlock images that you're seeing is actually my hair and kind of me putting my spin on representation within kind of like the barbershop and hair salon. So I'm, I'm, I've been exploring images that are mostly found within the black barbershop and hair salon um, and placing kind of like a, a self-portrait and juxtaposing that with images, you know, from the hair salon and barbershop. Um, so the, the faces and the eyes are directly um, depicting those images from the barbershops and hair salons. And then I'm kind of placing my hair and, as a self-portrait. Red for me is a very grounding color. And I mean, red definitely stands out by itself alone. And I wanted to use the color red and blue to kind of relate back to, you know, the barbershop and that spiral kind of sign that represents, you know, that's usually uh, red, white, and blue. And Yes, there's, in, in the pieces themselves, you'll see like red or black or red, blue, and black. And that's metaphorically kind of placing images of black people, black and brown folk, into the work and, you know, within this white field. And in a way, that's kind of a representation of how I feel inside. You know, like I said, coming from Barbados to the U.S., it's a very, very different um, space to be in is a very different like I'm, I'm placed in a different thought process right coming from a place that is majority black um, to now in a space that is kind of the opposite and so all of the colors are, are definitely kind of uh, a metaphor for placing myself into the work and then how I feel within the US kind of feeling within, being placed within this white space. Um, and then finding ways to be, to feeling at home. So the barbershop reference with the red, blue, and white, and then kind of placing images that are, you know, black and brown within that field. Yeah, the numbers relate to either the images that I was looking at previously, you know, as using like hairstyle guide posters as a reference. Um, so they might relate to um, images that are seen within that grid from like numbers 1 through 20 or 1 through 50, um, depending on the different variations within the hairstyle guide posters. And those are found, I've been fortunate to be in both spaces, the hair salon and the barbershop. And I really was kind of interested in listening to people as they, you know, are in those spaces to hear conversations about, about black men, about black women, hearing how black women, you know, talk about black men. And that also helps me to dictate the movement that you see within the pieces. Um, 
based on conversations that I might have with people, I am literally thinking about those things as I'm, as I'm kind of creating this work. Some of these pieces have references to people sitting in a barber chair and having this cape around them just that is represented with this black field and the cape the barbershop cape or you know hairstyle cape for me represents this moment of protection that i think is in that is important for not just black people but people in general it's a way to kind of represent security and in this kind of like the global context, you know, thinking about sanctuaries and places of safety, I think it's important for everyone to, to have that or to have those moments. And so for me, I just kind of wanted to represent um, and, and portray black hair and also have moments of, of security. I'm mostly exploring the faces and the portraits. And for me, I'm really interested in the faces that are, you know, looking directly at the viewer. I think there is a, a level of strength there that is literally confronting the viewer. And these images then are saying to the viewer, here I am and I'm proud of what I look like and I'm proud of how I'm, I'm representing myself to the world. Um, the eyes for me, I'm directly drawn to, so that's, that's kind of where I kind of start um, with, depending on the images, the eyes. Uh, the, the hair choices as well are really important for me because for me, coming from Barbados, I was really kind of drawn to images that I related to. And when I first moved to the U.S., I was interested in, you know, those, finding those images and those moments that reminded me of home. So in the barbershop, um, you know, having to go to barbershops and hair salons as well because of my hair, um, I was mostly drawn to those images that reminded me of home. And a lot of these images I also I saw back in Barbados. So, you know, hairstyles from like high top fades to, um, you know, having like Caesar haircuts with parts of different rappers like Nas. For me, that was, those are the images that I was really drawn to and that helped me to kind of select um, those particular images. Yeah, this piece I made back when I was in graduate school for my thesis show and I wanted to make it on this large scale with kind of, like you said, maximalist um, experience. And for me, I wanted to, after doing it, I really felt overwhelmed, which is what I wanted. But from there, I kind of wanted to pare, I wanted to pare it down a little bit and just simplify things and really kind of dive into the material and the imagery that I was working with. And so for me, I think this work definitely paved the way for this body, this new body of work for Supernatural. And I think now going forward, I'm definitely gonna place these images and kind of expand into a, a larger scale as well, um, kind of going forward because I, I do love working large and I just feel as though this body of work right now kind of speaks to where my experience is right now. Yeah, so the kind of like the images for soul, I was really kind of diving into this technique that I really found by accident. Um, initially, back in graduate school, I was trying to make like the perfect print and like, I think at the time my hand might have moved the screen as I was, you know, using the squeegee to pull. And I figured, ah, I kind of like the movement and the, the level of gestural quality within this, this print. 
And it's, it's definitely something that is, you know, kind of frowned upon in printmaking, but I've found a way to make it my own um, in this, in my practice. And so, soul for me, I mean, I'm really kind of interested in, in finding ways to kind of go beyond what art can do for us personally. And I think a lot about souls and the afterlife and how we're even represented in the afterlife and what that can look like. Um, so words like soul are important to me. I think it has also like this connotation or connection to um, religion for me. Um, I was born in Barbados and kind of raised Christian in a Christian household. My, my father's a priest and that is what kind of, like my background is definitely helping to set up my practice and kind of like this gestural quality is something that I've always been interested in. I, I went to school initially for painting and drawing and then somewhere in between graduate school and my final year I decided to make the switch to printmaking it's, it's, and in particular screen print. And so I wanted to find a way that I can be able to bridge painting, drawing, and printmaking and still have it look like my, my own. And just being really drawn to gestural qualities uh, within uh, painting and printmaking. My professor who was teaching me screen print, she, she definitely wanted me to kind of learn the basics. So I learned the basics. And then from there, I decided to kind of pivot and just, you know, do something that really suits me and my practice and what I'm trying to say in the work. Um, and the way how I kind of approach printmaking and screen printing is very intuitive. I'm not necessarily, I don't necessarily have a specific image or, you know, the final work in my head. I'm definitely approaching printmaking as a, print, a painter would. Um, you know, working on paintings, kind of listening to the work as I print and finding those moments that I really am drawn to, whether it might be a mark that I might have just made, stepping back and then viewing the work and, and looking at um, the different corners of the composition, um, the imagery that I'm also dealing with. Um, I wanted to highlight ghost printing in particular because it's it's kind of it's a technique that is I don't want to say frowned upon, but you know printmakers are always looking for the perfect print, and for me I'm I'm really drawn to the opposite of this. It's for me it's like this atmospheric quality that I love that reminds me of painting, but it's not a painting. You know, it's, it's almost like this in-between state where it, it is a painting, but it's also a print. And I love and really appreciate the, the quality of spatial relations. Um, as you can see in the work, there's, and, the, and these prints especially, there's a lot of negative space that I'm playing around with as well. And that, I'm just kind of using all of these different tools to then um, be used within a composition. So the ghost printing, I think it definitely relates to, you know, kind of going back to the, the, the title of the exhibition, Supernatural, and having like this ghost effect in, in some of these prints. Um, also tying back to like themes of the afterlife. I think I've also added elements of literally placing hair within the prints as well, and they're kind of embedded, um, painted over, printed over. So if you look up close, you can kind of see um, synthetic hair that I was fortunate to get from my, from my partner. Um, and thinking about, thinking about ways that I can just expound on what a print can be moving from just using ink and acrylic ink and the squeegee and silk screen and then placing actual 
black hair within the space or hair that was worn before, um, similar to, to capes that have been worn before and placing those into gallery space. I think with the capes that, I, that I'm placing uh, within the space, that to me represents like a body um, that is just holding space but and and in a way with the capes too, I wanted to show this level of a 3D element or sculptural element, but also that is very airy and has like this light uh, weight to it. But also is very powerful in a sense. Also kind of representing the supernatural. In a way, there's this ghostly interpretation that for me kind of relates back to this idea of ghost prints and that technique. So, yeah. whether, whether it be in this print context or more sculptural, I think, I'm definitely looking for a more three-dimensional aspect to kind of go in addition to the, the prints. Mm -hmm. And so expanding, again, expanding on representation, expanding on just themes that, I've, that I see on my everyday, you know, whether it be here that is on the ground somewhere, you know, people might have, might come from a party and you might see some tumbleweave, right? <laughs> like for me, that's, I think that the moments like that for me kind of show me that we're, we're all human and it's just an aspect that I would love to kind of bring into the gallery space as well. Moments of black representation that are kind of frowned upon, but I'd like to amplify that in a way that, and change that narrative as well. So I do, I do think that there is still a level of kind of negative connotation related to black hair and dreadlocks especially. And I, I love that word dread, right? In that there is, is already a negative connotation. Even in, in the Caribbean, there still is like this um, kind of like, we tend to push away or separate ourselves from people that are, you know, seen as Rastafarian um, or that they're, they have like their natural hair or they don't comb it and it's seen as being unprofessional. But I believe, as many of us believe, we shouldn't judge anyone based on their, on their skin color or even their hairstyle preference. For me, I think I will continue to, to use like my own hair as kind of like a self-portrait and kind of amplify images that are representing people that have dreadlocks. I think that's really important going forward because I would love for us to see as a, as a society and as a people that just because a person has dreadlocks, they aren't, they aren't unprofessional. Um, you know, it can be your post people have dreadlocks, your professors have dreadlocks, your Police officers have dreadlocks, and this is just something that I'm trying to place into the gallery space to show appreciation, to show a level of beauty that can be represented when people have um, different types of hairstyles. Um, I think that's really important, and that should be that should really be celebrated. I think. And I think going forward, I would love to do this more on a, on a larger scale, um, you know, kind of still using these uh, like similar images.